that feels pretty good. What's going on guys? Clint here with Classic Firearms out here at Take Aim Training and Range with the Zagana PX9. And guys, today's video, nine mil versus 40. And I've got an assortment of nine mil pistols, 40 cal pistols, and we're gonna talk with Matt back in the video room here in just a moment, but a lot of you guys down in the comment with these verses and calibers uh, videos, you actually want to see the guns shoot. So you know what? That's what we're here to do today. And the Zagana PX9, this is the uh, newest generation we've got. You gotta tell you, they feel pretty good. You got a couple of paper targets set up way down range there and uh, <laughs> check those impacts later. But uh, the new one here does feature full night sights, both front and rear night sights. It's got the little UID tag over here too, which is pretty cool. And it's actually a pretty comfortable pistol to shoot. Ambi safety, which also locks the slide in place, which is pretty nice. But yeah, it's pretty cool. There we go. 15 round mag, nice. And then we've got, guys, we got some surplus Glocks over here and it's something I want to denote right now. The Glock 17s uh, that we've got in, I don't typically see Glock 19s or 17s, uh, especially a Gen 4 like what this guy is in such good condition. And I think that might be because, well, more agencies are moving away from 40 cal because we see quite a few Glock 22s come through quite a bit. Yeah, that feels very good. Glock 17, 17 round mag, night sights as well on these guys. And we'll talk more about these, but just kind of wanted to shoot them some, you know what I mean? And now let's compare how that feels to a Glock 22. 15 rounds of 40 cal here. Let's take a couple of shots. So the recoil is obviously different. It's a little bit more snappy with the 22, but it's not uncomfortable by any means. All right, but it does feel good. And uh, the 22 and the 17, as you guys may already know, are pretty much the same gun, just different calibers. Whew. But I like them both. I think, we, I think I need one of each. And we've also got some Smith & Wesson 40 cals here. The MMP 40, very ergonomic pistol. Let's see how this guy feels compared to the Glocks and also the 9 mil. Something I've noticed right off the bat though, is even though this feels almost like a lighter pistol, a little bit more ergonomic with how they do their grip than the Glock, it also feels like it's got a lighter recoil to it, but still a 40 cal, so that's kind of interesting. Ooh, anticipated that one, easy now. I noticed on one of those I anticipated it and that muzzle dropped real low. I don't know if you guys noticed that or not. Even though I shoot a lot, especially for you guys, still gotta practice those fundamentals. But anyway, the Smith & Wesson MMP40 also come with some night sights, feels really good. But uh, all right, I've had some fun just kinda doing a couple of quick mag dumps with these guys here. What do y'all say we go back to the video room, talk with Matt, and let's discuss nine mil versus 40 cal. Let's go have some fun. So shooting both of these, are a lot of fun. Yeah. But sometimes some people just have a preference over the other and we're here to debate that. Guys, we've got Matt back today. What's up guys? And if you haven't guessed it by now, it's nine mil versus 40 cal here. And Matt, this was originally adopted by the FBI back in the 80s, right? That's right. And they it's eventually- Basically specifically for the FBI. Right, and then they eventually went to this guy. That's correct. All right, so let's give a little bit of history about the 40 cal. So we were discussing this just a moment ago and it's pretty much a 10 mil short, right? That's right. <laughs> so yeah. can you give a little bit of history as to why I 10 mean, mil wasn't selected, why they went with 40 cal when nine mil, which has been around since the early 1900s, wasn't selected, anything like that? Yeah, so you gotta remember at the time, propellants and things weren't like we are today. Sure. And so they wanted something that had more stopping power than a nine millimeter. Uh, so they originally wanted to try to go with for the 10 millimeter, but it had a lot of recoil for mm -hmm. what they considered uh, the average agent handle. So what they did was they had Smith & Wesson shorten the 10 millimeter case, creating the 40 caliber Smith & Wesson. Gotcha, okay. And the reason they didn't go with 45? Well, 45 is a pretty <laughs> antiquated caliber. I mean, I love all things short and fat, uh, but you know, it is uh, it is something that they uh, they wanted something that took more modern technology yeah. and at the time. Hard to believe, maybe now, but at the time, this was the pinnacle yep. of what they could come up with. Makes sense to me, honestly. So, first off, comment down below. 
40 cal versus nine. And of course, all you nine millimeter fanboys are gonna be hopping in, right? Nine mil is gonna take it by a storm. But we did a how effective is 40 cal videos. It's still rel relevant today and things like that. And I still think it is. It's still very much so a hot little round. It's got a lot of energy that travels fairly quickly as well. Uh, and I don't know, it shoots fine. Oh, this, <laughs> this might be kind of a controversial uh, opinion, I yeah. suppose. But I think with you know modern technology, there's just not a huge amount of difference between selecting that caliber or this caliber. I yeah. mean, capacity and handguns are basically the same. Yeah. Uh, a lot of your performance with self-defense ammo is gonna be pretty similar. Right. Uh, it's your preference. That's really what it comes down to. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the guns that we have out here because this is the nine millimeter chambered Glock 17. You've got the 40 cal Glock 22, right? That's right. And these are a couple of options that we have available at the time of this video. Mm -hmm. So if you're watching this in the future, maybe, maybe not, but make sure you sign up, sign up for our product notifications on the product ad in case you are looking for something that's not available at the moment. And then once it comes back in stock, you'll get an email notification. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool, right? But these are actually police or law enforcement trade-in Glocks that we've got. We've also got some Smith & Wesson and the P40s if you're interested. And uh, we've also got a little tiny guy that I've got in this one here. This one's kind of cool. <laughs> Talks about short and fat. This is the Glock 26, also a law enforcement trade-in, and uh, also chambered in nine millimeters. So if you're looking for that double stack concealed carry option, <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> you know, we had just done a video on uh, carrying concealed handguns. I'm yeah. sorry, carrying uh, surplus handguns. Right. Uh, this would be a great option for a surplus handgun that you could actually carry on a daily basis. Right, yeah, which is pretty cool, right? So first off, the nine mil cartridge. Mm -hmm. I'm a huge fan of it. I have several firearms that are in nine mil and I don't have any in 40 cal mm -hmm. yet, but something that I am noticing though is whenever you have you know popular cartridges that have been around literally since the early 1900s, uh, and a lot of firearms chambered in them, especially in today's current climate, trying to find ammunition is a little difficult. But I have yeah. seen I think more 40 cal come in than other more popular cartridges. Yeah, I'd tell so, you what, I mean, the color of it kind of gives away, these things are kind of like gold right now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, right. But uh, but yeah, absolutely. I mean, nine mil and 40 are both popular, but I definitely say nine mil takes the edge as far as overall popularity yeah. and also makes it the hardest to find on the shelf. Yeah. Um, so, you know, 40 caliber, being able to go for a second caliber, uh, it is a great option. In fact, I built a, a Glock, a Polymer 80 kit into a Glock, uh, mm -hmm. and I built it off of a Glock 22 slide because that gave me the option to use a Glock 17 barrel, a yep. 9 millimeter, or I could even theoretically go like 357 SIG. Right. Um, so the, the adaptability of that is a really cool option with the Glock 22. Yeah, which is, again, pretty neat because you don't have that same option with this guy. Yeah, you can go that way, but not right. this way. And just in case a lot of our viewers might not understand that, can you explain why? Sure, because the uh, barrel of the 40 caliber Glock has got a larger outer diameter. So it uh, will accept the nine millimeter barrel, but the 40 barrel won't go into that slide. It's quite simply, the slide won't fit the barrel. Yeah. That's really it. So pretty neat. And something that I think is pretty cool too is having the adaptability, like you said, because you might find yourself in a surplus of nine mil, but not 40, mm -hmm. and you can switch out those barrels and shoot. Or you might be in the reverse, and then it's like, well, switch out my barrels and shoot. And, and that's the yeah. great thing about Glocks overall is the amount of aftermarket support and things. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you were looking for a firearm that you can customize, you will be able to find parts for. If yeah. something you know needs to be replaced, there will be something available. Glocks yeah. are a great option. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of law enforcement trade-in or surplus type pistols that's going to be true also because mm -hmm. they need that support anyway it's not like you know their firearms don't ever get used or abused uh, so it's definitely true for other manufacturers like Smith & Wesson and their MMP series which are mm -hmm. also law enforcement firearms and what we see with our current trade-ins as well or turn-ins I should say and so yeah having that support and then also the parts available to work on them if need be or to customize them however you want yeah, definitely something very nice to have. And since we've got them out here too, all of the Glocks that I've seen so far, we're not guaranteeing them or the life on them, but all the Glocks that are law enforcement trade-ins that I have been seeing so far, like this 17, that 22, this 26, all do have night sights, which are always cool. But like I said, we're not gonna guarantee the life on them because I don't see a date on these guys. And I have no idea of being able to tell when they were produced. Right. Now they're not Trigicon. Trigicon usually stamps a date on them. Uh, these are actually Glock factory night sights, which is cool, but I'm not seeing a whole lot of life on them, but they do look a lot better than your factory Glock sights. So that's that. That's true for me at least. And I think, you know, an important thing to consider if you are gonna look at purchasing one of these is that there's gonna be some amount of wear. Um, 
it's it's not a ton, but I think the camera is going to pick up the fact that there is wear on the slide right. of this, and some of the kind of stippling is a little flattened. Uh, you typically see that, especially on kind of the right hand side of the grip, because yeah. most people are right handed. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to show the top there because there's a little bit more from holster wear here on top, but. Uh, I mean, it's still going to be a fully functional firearm. It's going to be a great value for the money. Uh, and, you know, go out there and carry, use, price, yeah. all go, that good stuff. Yeah, go shoot, right? Well, I say that while we hold these very two precious metals here in my hand. So, guys, let me know down in the comments. 40 cal versus 9mm. My pick, my pick's going to be 9mm. Personally, it's just going to be 9mm. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. I've shot 40 cal. I think it's fun and everything. But me personally... You know, I think maybe just how some pistols are set up to shoot, they feel like it's a little bit lighter recoil to me and I'm more accurate with this cartridge. Sure. Now that also is probably quite simple because I train the most with this cartridge. Mm -hmm. If I were to actually give 40 cal the light of day and go out to the range and start shooting it, as much as I shoot nine mil, I might find myself being more accurate with this guy. Mm -hmm. So the same thing I can say with my 45. My FNX 45 Tactical, I love shooting that gun and I'm very effective and accurate with it but I don't shoot 45 all the day, all day, but I have shot it a lot in history. Right. <laughs> in history, right. But, you know, so it's like, guys, put it this way. Whatever you have, if you actually train with it, it's probably an effective tool. If you know it's going to work every time you pull the trigger, if you're accurate with it, and you actually know how to run drills with it, clear malfunctions, then it doesn't matter what caliber these are, you're good to go. Yeah. And if you're looking for something that's not a police trade-in, we also have another great option for 9mm, which is those new enhanced PX9 pistols. Oh, yeah. Yeah, those came in, and those are great, man. Those are sweet. So what's enhanced about them? So they have a night sights, as opposed to the originals did not. Okay. And I think the finish is a little bit different on them as well. Okay. Gotcha. Well, the fact that they're coming with night sights alone is like a huge plus just in my book. Yeah. So. And you know, I mean, the PX9s have been really popular for us. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. check out the PX9s, guys. If you're not familiar with what those are, we have a video of a little bit of live fire with that. And it's also the same gun you shot or you shot. Well, maybe you've shot. You saw being shot by me earlier. And yeah, they're fun guns. And I do actually like shooting them quite a bit. So. There we go, guys. Again, 9mm versus 40 cal. You guys already know. We already know Matt's pick. 7.62 trigger. It, yeah, it's going to be 7.62 by 25 for you. But if you had to choose between these two, which one are you more comfortable with and which one do you prefer? 9mm. 9mm. Yeah. Yeah. And, well, it's it, this is more of a surplus cartridge because it's been around longer, right? Yeah, I mean... And, again, in, in my mind, when I think 9mm <laughs> sometimes, especially 9mm Luger, the line goes straight to the Luger. You yeah. know, I just think awesome because it was pretty much Not designed... Not the Brita 92 or... No, because no, because right, because the, the guy's name was what George Luger that does that designed it, right? I'm just thinking, but you being a marine, I would yeah. think you would go to your service weapon. Nah, man, I go, I go back, I go that far back, man. I go with those Lugers because they are just so sweet, or a Swiss Luger. I mean, whatever you know, they're beautiful. But anyway, 40 cal versus nine mil. There's our take on it. Check out all of our nine millimeter surplus options and also new options like the PX9. And again, I want to hear from y'all down in the comment section. Now. Something else we got mm -hmm. is our current giveaway, and she's a beauty, guys. This right here is the DS Arms SA58 FAL type rifle, and uh, I love this rifle. I absolutely love it. It's coming with do, the EOTech. Is there a rifle we've given away you haven't loved? I mean, you get to shoot a little. So. I, I was gonna say one that I no, <laughs> no, I don't, I don't. Okay, so I love this one a lot more than some other ones, maybe. But anyway, guys, this does come with the adjustable gas block, M-lock rail on it, EOTech holographic sight, and also the magnifier, side folding stock, adjustable comb height and length of pull, and more of your saw style grip, like the M249 saw. I really wish we could just build full, build full autos with, you know. There's some things you shouldn't feel bad about. You shouldn't feel bad about having to call in sick, you know, if you're actually sick. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't want to go to some party or whatever, you don't have to go. And you shouldn't feel bit bad about building machine guns. But, <laughs> but it's illegal, so I advise you not to do that. But anyway, guys, check out our current giveaway at ClassicFirearms.com. And, of course, all of our 40 cal and 9 millimeter options. And... I hope we got ammo we can throw in an email to send you to, so <laughs> we'll see. Matt, anything else you want to talk about? Uh, just remember that the best way to enter the contest is always going to be to refer friends. That's going to give you the biggest bang for your buck. But if that's not your thing, you don't have cool friends, you can always just watch a couple videos with Clint, yeah. peruse the product pages. There's lots of ways to enter. And uh, I mean, hit them all, man. Yeah, hit them all. And the other way we have to get entries is a code word. That's right. Code abbreviation in this case. It's FAL to make it <laughs> very simple. Not what FAL stands for. Let me know down in the comments what that means. Guys, I'll end it there. 
course, as always, we appreciate your business. God bless. We'll see you next time at ClassicFarms.com.